Hi, I'm Sissy, and I'm an art teacher. I use art not only to create children's stories and personal projects, but also use art to heal and release emotional traumas and stress. I want to teach you how anyone can and should create art at any age. So follow me as I teach you art techniques for your creative expression, but also for your internal well-being. In the previous video, we talked about Senye Abstract Inks. Senye, you should sponsor this girl. It's a great video and I'll put a link up for you guys to watch it. Now in this video, we talk about Holbein gouache and paint an owl. Now to the video. Bye. <laughs> hey everyone, welcome to a new video. So as promised, in this video, I will be showing you guys how I use this lovely set of Holbein acrylic gouache. They are beautiful. Let me show you the cover of this set. I mean, I've, I've been wanting to get Holbein gouache, but I didn't really want to get just individual colors. I wanted a set um, because sometimes price-wise it's better because these are quite expensive. Um, it's a Rebecca Green. I mean, look at that beautiful, lovely illustration. I'm a big fan of hers. Um, she just has this these just beautiful children illustrations, and I'm a sucker for children illustrations. So I got this set of 12 colors, um, and I bought it from Germany, actually. I live in France, but I saw this set, um, and I believe the price was 50-some euros plus shipping. So I had to get them, and the colors are just fabulous. Um, I really enjoy the greens that are in here, the blues that are in here, the burnt sienna is wonderful, the sepia, all of them. I would, though would have liked a different yellow. The mustard, even though it's great, I would have preferred a different yellow, but that's the that's the only thing that I would have changed. Besides that, I love this set. It's a good set. So I have been using this set for quite a while, and that's why I thought now is the right time to do a review, because I started out, before getting this set, I had gotten just a couple of colors, and I'm going to show you here the original colors that I got. There are all these like neon pastel colors, and of course I bought them in the fall. So it's like, why are you buying neon pastel colors in the fall? Because, because yes, because I love these colors and I needed them. So I got those colors, to, and I have a whole bag of gouache, but they're the, they're the regular gouache. They're from Le Fond Bourgeois wash they're really good i recommend these these are my go-to water activating gouache most definitely they're the best absolutely love this brand and um and so yeah so i'm going to show you guys some of the paintings that i've done with gouache so let me turn the camera over and before i get into this tutorial on how to paint this beautiful owl with acrylic gouache. Let me show you the paintings that I did first. Okay guys, so now let me show you the paintings that I have done with acrylic gouache. I'm gonna start with the first one. So this was the first one that I did with acrylic gouache. You can see here that I was, I was using all of those beautiful, uh, luminous, fluorescent, paints. There were the original ones that I got. Um, the background, I used some just regular gouache. These are all Le Franc Bourgeois gouache here that you see. And then the bird is only, except for a bit of white and yellow and green, those three colors. Everything else is with those acrylic gouache. The next one that I did with my beloved Archie's paper because this is just this is just some paper. It's like 180 gram paper. So it is a bit it buckled a bit, but I just didn't want it to do it as a test. So the next one I did was this beloved porcupine. Now this is the one that I would come and go back and come and go back and I was using the set. This is the first painting that I did with the Rebecca Green Holbein acrylic gouache set. And I did use in here um, some of the other fluorescent-y, pastel -y colors that I had and also for the flowers. But everything else is purely from that set. But everything that I used here except for the white and the black are acrylic gouache. 
Then the next one that I did with acrylic gouache, but here I was also playing around with the acrylic inks, is this whale here. I was just playing around with just like dropping the inks on the page and then with the acrylic gouache and regular gouache, I created this whale. The following one is this bear that I did. This was most recent. Here I also used some of the Neo colors and I used my hands. It was, this was a very therapeutic painting that I was doing, some of my art therapy work. And today's beauty, this is the painting that we will be doing together. Now, don't you worry. If you do not have gouache, you can always use, um, acrylic paints would be best um, because they're opaque. I would not do this with watercolors because just the technique is completely different. So you can use acrylics, most definitely. Okay, so let's start. All right, everyone. So as you can see, my page is blank. My water cup is full of clean water. And that means that I have not started yet to paint this beautiful owl painting. Here I'm just going through the woodland creatures that I have created. Here's a little squirrel that's going off to Columbia to a dear friend in her nursery. A bear that I created therapeutically. It has been a wonderful thing to painting these woodland creatures, I have to say. It's, it's a pure and utter joy to sit down whenever I have a free moment and touch the page because the arches paper that I use is cold press. Grano fino. So there's a texture to it. There's a heaviness to it. Ah, oh, and it just feels so good when you touch it with your hands. And I've been using alongside uh, this arch beautiful paper is a 4B pencil. So it has a creamy smoothiness that just glides off the page and goes up and down the little hills and mountains of the texture on the paper. So before I started, I decided that I wanted to listen to a lovely podcast. But you, if you are going to be painting with me, you'll be listening to my voice. And I truly hope that it is a soothing and relaxing and enjoyable experience. I found a reference picture which I will be posting to one side of the image here on the screen so that you can look at it as long as you also are painting. It is a touch and go type situation when you are drawing from a reference picture because you don't want it to look exactly like it, but at the same time you do. Because already the picture was beautiful. Now this painting I am not doing um, to sell, it is only just for me. So there's nothing really wrong with painting a reference picture from a reference picture just as how it looks. There's no problem. As long as you're not profiting from it, which I am not, <laughs> there's no problem at all. It's a good exercise to do. And especially when you don't quite know what to draw, but you have this urge to paint, which was me in this moment. I had to process some emotions and the best way that I find to process my emotions is to just let it all out on the page. I didn't want something cheery, I just wanted something that I could explore the dark and the light. And this picture was perfect. I for one absolutely love to draw owls and birds in general. I find them to be so whimsical and magical and they're just beautiful. Their colors and shapes and eyes and everything. It's just, it's a joy to draw. So grab a piece of paper and a pencil and just start sketching out the basic shapes. You don't have to really get into details. The more details that you draw, the more difficult it will be to paint over them. Because gouache and acrylics are opaque painting materials, you won't really be able to see what's underneath them. So, I mean, if you wanted to, a cool exercise would be to write some message that no one is going to see except you. You could write what your thoughts are, what your dream was, what your secrets are, and then paint over them. And it's like a vault. No one will be able to see what is underneath that, those layers and layers of paintings. So, it's just an idea, just a fun little exercise that you could do. With me, it's just the uh, sketchy lines that you will no longer be able to see 
once you've put paint over them. You can use that to your advantage. So sometimes, you know, I have to take a step back and look at things and then continue on painting. And that's no problem with that. I mean, this stage doesn't have to be fast and you can make mistakes and erase things that you realize, oh no, the proportions there aren't proper. Ooh, no, that should better go more to the left. Or yeah, that's a bit too chubby. It's all all right. This is just a beginning stage. And that's the beauty of gouache and acrylics is that you can cover it up. There are no mistakes when it comes to acrylic and wash. They're very forgiving. So I think I'll speed up this bit of it and I'll come join you once my sketch is over and I start painting the background. See you in a bit, guys. So here you can see I'm already creating my background with the acrylic inks from Sennelier. These are the inks that I was using in my previous video and created a review. If you have not seen that video, I will leave a link down below for you to watch it. it I really recommend these inks. They're so vibrant and pigmented and just wonderful overall to work with. So what I did first, as you saw just a few seconds ago, was that I first apply a layer of fresh, clean water to the page. And just because I just love seeing them spread, I put some drops on the page and then I spread the color around the figure where I wanted it to be. Um, if I were to continue only using inks, I would have to first apply the lightest color and then the darker ones. But since I will be using solely acrylic gouache for the rest of this painting, except for the background, I already started with the burnt sienna, which is a nice vibrant dark color and continued on there. So I'm going to speed up the little bit of the background because it's just water, apply ink and spread it around. And I will see you in the next part where I start painting the branch and the owl.
All right, everyone. So as you can see now, I have been placing another layer of water, but this time it's no longer on the background, but on the mossy trunk branch thing <laughs> that the owl is on. I do this because I prefer to have an even layer of a base color when I am applying gouache or watercolor ink. That's how I like to work with these mediums. When it comes to acrylics, it's a bit different. You don't need to do this layer of water first. You would just need the consistency of the acrylic paint to be um, not too dense, not too thick. Uh, you need to add a bit of, of either medium to it or water if you don't have the medium. But so here I'm choosing to start with a mid-range of tone of a green uh, and I'm just applying it freely and it's it's not very translucent. I have a quite amount of paint on my brush. I do not really want to see any white when I am applying this color um, and I'm doing it in a very free way because since I applied water it is just going to disperse and mix and create an even layer unlike inks that's that's a difference that uh, you won't get such an even coverage with inks or watercolors if you don't have the same amount of paint because then once it dries it leaves these puddles but because of how gouache is created with with the different materials that it has and the opaqueness that it has the likelihood of it creating really deep um, puddles uh, is not as likely and of course if you see that there's like this very concentrated area you can always take a bit of paint back or remove it not back and then on top while it's still wet I get another green um, I believe this is the emerald green if I'm not mistaken no it's yes it's the emerald green that I grab from the set and I'm just adding it where I see the lighter areas. But of course, this is not the true light color of the green areas. It is a darker. And with gouache, just like with acrylics, you want to start with a darker base color and then work from there and go back and forth. Um, you go from dark to light with gouache and with acrylics. And so then on top of it, I add some of the okra I believe it is. No, it's ash yellow. I add ash yellow to the green to highlight certain areas where I see there is a different tonality to them. This really is just observing the picture and going back and forth and seeing where you need to place some colors. Now, this should be a very free and loose exercise right now because it's not about the details. It's just about the lighting and the colors that you see when you're glancing or focusing on the reference picture and trying to put that as perfectly as you can because I hate to use the word perfect so I was trying to look for a different word but right now that's all I can think of as best as you can to create these areas now on top of it while it's still wet and this i'm working fast because i don't want the page to dry on me yet and here i'm adding sepia this is also from the mix uh the set sorry to those darker areas that i see to give that really 3d dimensional feel to the painting I do remove parts of the paint to create a bit of highlight in certain areas, to bring parts out. Um, you just wash your brush in the water, dry it a little bit so it's a bit moist. And if the page is still wet with water, you can lift some of the color. You can do this also with watercolor. With ink, it can be a bit more difficult because ink tends to really stick to the page faster than watercolors and gouache. And I'm just playing around. And then after I create a base, you could say, for the mossy thing that the owl is on top, I create quite a light tone for the owl's body and face. And I apply it quite thickly. Here I did not do 
a wet wash because since I knew that the mossy area was still wet, I did not want any green in the owl. Even though I know you can cover it up later, I didn't want that. So I decided that I would create very a very thick layer of a creamy beige undertone but darker than the lightest beige tone that the owl has. And while that was wet, I would be able to incorporate more of the rusty, terracotta, orangey, red, and blue tones that I saw of the feathers and go from there. So I will speed this part up again. And I will meet you when I am working on the details. So now that I had already created all the base colors and the different tonalities that I wanted to add to the owl, it was in the ugly stage. And I know that when you're in the ugly stage, you probably think, oh no, I've ruined it. There's no going back. What can I do? Oh, what a failure. Here I thought I could paint something and now I can't. Well, you're wrong. You, you can't give up. As anything in life and everything in life, there's going to be difficult moments. And it is right after those difficult moments that you see the beauty, the deadline. You have to push through. And once you push through these ugly stages of your artwork and add the details, that's when it really comes alive and it's so much fun to add a little bit of this and a little bit of that and those little lines here and the little detail there. That little bit of a splash of a color on that little bit of the page or little dots of this here, that's what brings it to life. It's the little extra after the foundation has been added, after you've built the walls and put the windows in, you get to go inside and decorate. And that's what we're doing here. We are adding the final little pieces that bring all of the foundation work to life. 
and it finally looks like something that resembles a really nice owl. And it was so much fun. I would do a little bit here in the face, then I would come down into the mossy area and add bits of like little specks of moss and different tonalities. I would add highlights here and darken it a bit there, bring a little blue on the owl. That blue really made it pop because it really contrasted nicely with the rusty color. Add the little sparks in the eye. And once you add those little specks of uh, light reflection, in the eyes, it just brings the owl to life. It's no longer this flat, two-dimensional thing on a paper. It's an owl, a magical owl, surrounded by moss and darkness, darkness, darkness. So it was, I mean, I just feel so much joy when I get to, when I get to this point of adding the details because you just go through the motions with with creating the, the layers and layers of colors but then come the details and that's like being at the playground you get to do all these wonderful things and then once i had done all the details i realized i wanted that background to be even darker so i grabbed i believe yeah this is black where is it green no it's black it's the black ink and I wanted it just around the owl so it could really like pop out and in the lower corners of the painting. And I am very glad that I did that because I think it makes a world of a difference. Before it was very flat, the owl kind of was like the same color as the background. But then once you add some black and I even added some white because even though it is not completely opaque, it is somewhat translucent. It really just blended so nicely the previous layers with the additional black layer. And then I also grabbed some of the Neo colors to add a little bit of, of just a little bit of spice to it because I just love, love working with them. And that, my friends, is it. That's how I created this. So if you painted alongside with me, I would love to see your owls. All right guys, well I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial and don't forget that if you have not already, subscribe and comment down below. Let me know what you would like to see on this channel and thank you for watching. Have a great day guys. Bye!